Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to welcome you to tonight's President's Medal Ceremony, honoring two extraordinary advocates for arts education, Susan Benedetto and her husband, singer and artist, and 2001 GW Honorary Degree recipient, Tony Bennett. It's especially fitting that we honor Susan and Tony here at the Corcoran. Not quite a year ago, the Corcoran College of Art and Design joined our university as its newest school, and we're currently in the process of transforming what is now the Corcoran School of the Arts and Design into an innovative model of arts education. We're bringing the performing and visual arts together under a single roof and providing our students in the arts with the opportunities, all the opportunities that a large research university can provide. We want to train students in art and computer science, in art and politics, and more broadly in the arts of community engagement. We're also renovating this historic building, and when we're done, the National Gallery will use the magnificent suite of galleries on the second floor above us to display modern and contemporary works on a scale not possible at its Constitution Avenue location. One of these rooms will be reserved for rotating exhibitions of the masterpieces with which the legacy of the Corcoran is most powerfully associated. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests, and in particular to, and I'll mention the group now and some others a little bit later on, but first to the delegate of the United States Congress from the District of Columbia, the Honor, Honorable Ellen, Eleanor Holmes Norton. Uh, Eleanor uh, Delegate Norton is here, or perhaps coming a little bit later. The Chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities, William Bro Adams, whom I, I know is here now. There he is. Thank you. Welcome. The Director of the National Portrait Gallery, Kim Sayet. There she is. President Emeritus of Cornell University and currently the President of the Association of American Universities, Hunter R. Rawlings III. Hunter is here. George Washington alumni, honorary degree recipients and supporters of the arts, Peggy Cooper Kafritz and Clarice Smith. Peggy and Clarice. The head of the Duke Ellington School of the Arts, an important partner of uh, our university in promotion of arts education, Giuseppe De Vargas. There she is, back in there. And we have a number of George Washington trustees, vice presidents, deans, faculty members, staff, and students who have joined us this evening. And let me particularly mention the chair of our board, Nelson Carbonell. and the Dean of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, which now includes the Corcoran School, Ben Vincent. The George Washington University President's Medal was established in 1988. Tonight, Susan and Tony join an illustrious line of recipients that includes noted musicians Dave Brubeck and Judy Collins, distinguished journalist and commentator Walter Cronkite, playwright and statesman Vaclav Havel, Nobel laureates Mikhail Gorbachev and Shimon Peres, and most recently noted physician, art collector, and GW trustee emeritus, Dr. Luther Brady. The university is proud this evening to add Susan and Tony to this distinguished list. Since I arrived at GW eight years ago, as you heard, and learned about our university's strong relationship with Tony Bennett, my appreciation of Tony's and Susan's work as leaders and advocates of, the arts, of arts education has continued to grow. In his most recent book, Life is a Gift, he's written four books, by the way, Tony recounts being inspired by student art displayed in Chicago's Gallery 37 as part of an urban arts education program. At the same time, Susan, who had recently graduated from Columbia University, was teaching social studies at the LaGuardia School of Music and Performing Arts. Tony discussed with Susan and his son, Danny, his desire to start a public high school for the arts in New York City. Susan's enthusiasm matched his, and together they created the organization Exploring the Arts, where she continues to serve as president of the board. The foundation supports arts programs in the schools, provides after-school arts opportunities, and now partners with 17 public high schools in New York, as well as six public schools in Los Angeles. After creating Exploring the Arts, Susan and Tony pursued their dream of establishing a freestanding School of the Arts. They began in 2001 in temporary space 
at LaGuardia Community College. Eight years later, the school moved into its own space in Tony's hometown of Astoria and was named the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts in honor of one of Tony's closest friends. I had the pleasure of visiting the Frank Sinatra School in October 2009, a month after it was dedicated. By then, its enrollment had grown from 250 to 750 students. I met many of the teachers and students in that vibrant space and was particularly delighted to see our university recognized on a plaque in the school's beautiful atrium. At Frank Sinatra, students acquire real-world experience in the arts through internships and apprenticeships, and graduates are prepared for the finest conservatories and universities in the country. And the Frank Sinatra School has one of the highest graduation rates in the city of New York. In the years since I first had the pleasure of meeting Tony, I've also followed another of his vocations, painting. After this ceremony, if you haven't done so already, I hope you'll have a chance to visit Gallery One, right over here, where you'll find an exhibition of works representing his life as a painter. While still a young man on the streets of Astoria, Tony began sketching and painting murals at the age of 14. He enrolled in Manhattan's School of Industrial Arts, now known as the High School of Art and Design, and he's continued painting ever since. Anthony Benedetto's paintings, he uses his family name when in his role as a visual artist, have been exhibited around the world. Three are housed in museums of the Smithsonian Institution here in the District of Columbia. Tonight we're privileged, thanks to a generous donation by George Washington alumnus Ali Kalagasi, to be able to display just a small sample of Tony's extensive body of work. And finally, before turning to the formal citations, and you've had a hint of this already, I'd like to mention one of Tony's current projects, which is to reintroduce the world's younger generations to the American songbook. As everyone here no doubt knows, he has been doing so through a remarkable collaboration with another great vocal artist who also happens to be here this evening, Lady Gaga, who's in the front row. But I also want to tell you that she's here with her parents, Joe and Cynthia Germanata, and I am delighted to note that Cynthia is an alumna who received her MPA degree from George Washington, and Lady Gaga and Tony will perform together at the Kennedy Center tomorrow evening and again on Saturday. So, now for the formal presentation of the citations, it's my pleasure to invite Susan Benedetto to the stage. So, I'll now read the citation. You have devoted your career to making arts education a priority in America's public schools. Your efforts both as an educator and as the co-founder of a major educational organization have enriched the lives of countless students. You were born in San Jose, California in 1966 and you are a graduate of Fordham University and Columbia University's Teachers College. You were the owner of Creative Arts Management where you advised artists on the management of their careers and coordinated publicity, bookings, and recording projects. It was in New York that you began your career in education as a social studies teacher at the Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts. In 1999, you and your husband, the celebrated singer and painter Tony Bennett, founded the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts, a public high school in Astoria, Queens, where you served as a social studies teacher and assistant principal. That same year, you co-founded Exploring the Arts, a nonprofit organization that works collaboratively with public high schools in New York City and Los Angeles to help build high-quality school day arts programs and to provide students with additional out-of-school arts opportunities. As president of the board of Exploring the Arts, you work tirelessly to provide equitable access and opportunity in the arts to underserved youth. You and Tony are passionate advocates for the arts in 2010, you both were honored with the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers Foundation Champion Award. In 2013, Teachers College of Columbia University recognized your contributions to the arts at its 125th anniversary gala. Susan Benedetto, in recognition of all the foregoing, the George Washington University proudly confers upon you the President's Medal.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me here this evening. And I'd like to give a special thank you to President Knapp and the Board of Trustees for this honor. We all know the arts are special. They bring us together. They inspire us. And when the arts are taught in school, great things happen. Young people are excited to come to school. They learn better in all of their disciplines, and they begin to experience the joy of their own creativity and celebrate creativity in others. With this in mind, my husband, Tony Bennett, and I founded Exploring the Arts, whose mission is to transform the lives of young people through arts education. Tony and I are thrilled that thanks to our many partners and supporters, including George Washington University, ETA is able to provide arts programs and opportunities that impact over 16,000 public high school students each year. Approximately 70% of those students live at or below the poverty line, and 90% are black or Latino. For too long in the United States, opportunities in public education have not been equally distributed. A federal report from President Obama, his Committee on the Arts and Humanities, noted that black and Latino students are only half as likely to have arts classes in their schools as other groups of students. The report even points to student boredom with a narrowing standardized curricula as a leading reason for high dropout rates. So it's a belief that all students deserve the very best quality public education and a belief in the profound impact of the arts that fuels our work. Again, thank you very much for this honor, and thank you for helping to make that work possible. I'd like to just add one very special heartfelt thank you to Tony, who not only exemplifies the power of the arts, the importance of giving back, and inspires us all in the process. Thank you very much. So I'd now like to ask uh, Tony Bennett if he might uh, join us on stage. Great. You are among the most popular recording and performing artists in the history of this country, and your work has significantly shaped the American Songbook. You have become a leading voice for the future of arts education. You were born in the Astoria section of Queens, New York in 1926. As a teenager, you sang while waiting tables. You enlisted in the Army during World War II and served in Europe. Later, you studied at the American Theater Wing on the GI Bill. Your big break came in 1949 when comedian Bob Hope noticed you in Greenwich Village a string of singles in the early 1950s, including chart toppers Because of You and Rags to Riches, brought you early success and set the stage for a long career at the forefront of American music. Your signature song, the 1962 hit I Left My Heart in San Francisco, earned you your first two of 18 Grammy Awards. Your artistry and your popularity extend well beyond the stage. You're a celebrated painter, three of whose works are housed in the Smithsonian Institution's permanent collections, including Central Park, an oil on canvas at the American Art Museum, and your portrait of Duke Ellington at the National Portrait Gallery. As passionate advocates for the arts, you and your wife Susan Benedetto have worked tirelessly to make art education a priority in American public schools. In 1999, you and Susan founded the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts in your hometown of Astoria, Queens. That same year, you founded the nonprofit organi education organization Exploring the Arts. Today, Exploring the Arts has partnerships with 23 public high schools in New York City and Los Angeles. You're also an advocate for civil rights. You marched with Martin Luther King Jr. in Selma and refused to perform in South Africa during the apartheid era. A dedicated humanitarian, you have raised millions of dollars for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation your original paintings are displayed each year as the cover of the American Cancer Society's annual holiday greeting card with proceeds going to cancer research. 
Your career as a performer, painter, and arts advocate spans seven decades, and you remain today as popular as ever. In the last decade alone, you've sold 10 million records, partnering with a roster of celebrated artists on collaborative albums. You have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You've won two Emmy Awards. You received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2001 and became a Kennedy Center honoree in 2005. You were named a National Endowment for the Arts Jazz Master in 2006. And in 2001, you were awarded the degree of Doctor of Music Honoris Causa by the George Washington University. Tony Bennett. In recognition of all the foregoing, the George Washington University proudly bestows upon you the President's Medal. My wife's name is Susan Benedetto. My name is Benedetto. It was Bob Hope when I first started out that gave me my big break in the entertainment world. He said, what's your name? I said, Benedetto. He said, well, that's a little long. He said, let's call you Tony Bennett. And to this day, I love it but I, that he did that, but I regret because I love my name, Benedetto. In Italian, it's uh, about the best name you could have because when it's transposed into English, it means the beloved. The name Benedetto means the beloved. And that's how I feel tonight. Thank you very much.